In this video, we will explore task execution and errors, errors mainly. Uh, so how about playbook errors? Well, a play contains a series of tasks, and task dependencies in general are very important. And that means that if a task fails to run on a specific host, further execution of tasks in the failing play is aborted for that specific host. And there's a reason behind it. The reason is that the further tasks normally depend on the previous tasks. So if a previous task is failing, it makes no sense to continue. And that is why further execution will fail. But uh, you can always do something against it. And that is ignore errors true. If you use ignore errors true and you put it in the play header, uh, then you will continue execution of tasks on that host anyway. And in some cases, that may make sense. We also need to talk briefly about undoing playbook modifications. Sometimes people are asking, hey, can we easily undo what the playbook has done? Well, the answer is no. And there's a very good reason uh, for it. Uh, the reason is that in a playbook, complex dependency relations are defined. And because of the complex dependency relations, uh, you cannot just undo uh, a playbook. Let me give you an example. Uh, you want to, uh, to run some service. In order to run some service, you need to install Python pip. So just to make sure that no matter what your playbook is doing, you start your playbook by installing Python pip and then you do whatever you do with your service. How are you going to undo such a playbook? Are you going to undo such a playbook by removing the service? Probably, but how about Python pip? Because Python pip is something that might very well be required by other services as well. And that is why there is no default way to undo uh, what you are doing with a playbook. The only way would be to write a playbook that is doing the opposite actions in reversed order. Now let's go check out some uh, error behavior. So I have a playbook, which is failing task.yaml. It's a very simple playbook. It's running on all hosts. Let's do gather facts. Uh, no, by the way, to speed it up a little bit. And then you can see that it is creating users the wrong way using the command module. Why is that the wrong way? Well, because the command module by nature is not idempotent. We've already seen that. We will see it again. Uh, next, I'm using debug, and debug is uh, printing the message, run me again and see if you get there. So the idea is the first time we run it, if the user does not yet exist, the user will be created. But because of the idempotency failure in the command module, the second time we run it, uh, command module should give an error. Because user add on a creating user is giving an exit code other than zero. So we never get uh, to the second uh, task. Let's see if this is true. So Ansible playbook on failing task.yaml is doing what? And oh no, it's giving me an error. Well, that's kind of un uh, unintended, but let's analyze anyway. Playbook must be a list of plays, got a class Ansible mapping instead. So it has a problem with the list of plays. And do you see what the problem is? I hope you do. We are missing the proper indentation. You see that it's all indented to the left. That's not working out. This is also, by the way, why I don't normally do any syntax check. You can do syntax check on Ansible playbooks, but why would you want to run a syntax check if the playbook is telling you what is wrong if it contains any errors? The syntax check would print the exact same error. Now let's run it again, and now we can see it is doing better. And what do we see? We see fatal uh, on Ansible 2, it is failing. On Ansible 1, it is failing. But on Ubuntu, it was working all right. So only on Ubuntu, uh, we get uh, the message. And you can see the failure is because the user that we are trying to uh, create already exists. And the command is generated return code 9. Ansible always works on the return code of a command to determine whether or not something has changed. Now, if you run it again, what is going to use? Uh, what is going to happen? Well, it's failing everywhere uh, because of the lack of item potency if you use the command module. Now, if you want to do something about that, uh, then uh, this is one option. Uh, use ignore errors and set that to yes or true. 
Again, it's a Boolean value, it doesn't really matter what you are setting it to. And there we see uh, ignoring, ignoring, ignoring. So we have an error, but we avoid the default behavior, we ignore the error. And we do see the second message anyway. But hey, uh, let me also show you how you should use something like this. Uh, you should use user. So user and user needs name. Uh, user add uh, Anna or, or whatever uh, and user needs uh, name not user add Anna but ju just the name Anna and all the other properties that you might want to define so if you run it again then we can experience the idempotent nature uh, of the user module. We can see for some reason it's giving a change on Ubuntu, but definitely it's giving an OK and an OK on Ansible 1 and Ansible 2. That is what idempotency is all about. The current state of the managed machine already meets the desired state. Simple, nothing needs to be changed.